So we're going to talk here about uh, GDP. This is the first of the three major macroeconomic indicators. And uh, we'll continue to talk about GDP throughout the entire course. So what exactly does GDP tell us? Basically, GDP is telling us the value of current production at current prices. How much we're producing, how much what we're producing costs, and the total amount that that adds up to. Um, when we look at a particular year's output and we look at that particular year's prices, we are looking at nominal GDP. So when we look at what is being produced in 2013 and we use 2013 prices, that's called nominal GDP. Um, and I'll explain in a minute why we would use prices from another year. Um, the problem with nominal GDP is it's great for telling us a particular year, but if we want to compare from year to year, we need to find a way to sort of normalize it, okay? And so that is the reason that we look at real GDP. Real GDP takes one year's production, but it puts it in terms of another year's prices. And what this allows us to do is see, did, did we grow because output grew or did we grow because prices increased so now let's take a look here at real GDP okay all we do for GDP is multiply price how much things cost times the amount sold times quantity and that will give us our GDP okay um, and there you see it now we need to be careful though okay because if the number is greater, is the number greater because prices went up? Or is our GDP number because we had more output? What we're concerned with, we want to know if there was more output, okay? And this is why we sort of normalize for prices, okay? If things have gone up, okay, it might be because of prices, that means the economy hasn't really grown. There's been no increase in output. And that's something that's important to understand. And so, when we look at real GDP, we take production in a particular year and we use prices from a fixed point in time. This is what we'll refer to as a base year. And so now we can look at, okay, well, if prices are equal across the board and our number is greater, there must be more output. And again, like most things, you'll see this as we start to practice it. And so if we look at production numbers from 2013, but we use prices from 2012, this is going to create our real GDP in 2013. And we can say, compared to 2012, did we uh, grow as an economy? <laughs> Before we get into the real GDP talk, um, this is an important formula that you absolutely must know. This tells us about growth, percent change formula. This is something that, you know, maybe some of you can figure out intuitively, um, but if not, it's something you absolutely must understand. So if we want to know the percent increase of something, we want to take the final value, subtract the initial value, divide it by the initial value, and multiply it by 100. And again, you will see this as you practice it a few times. It's not very difficult. Uh, you need to remember that you can't use a calculator on the AP exam, so you should feel comfortable that the numbers you're going to be working with are very, very simple, okay? So for our purposes, when we talk about the final value, we're talking about the current year, the year we're talking about. And we talk about the initial value, we're talking about the base year, okay? So important to understand that. So let's look at some examples here. So first we're going to look at nominal GDP. So we have two years, 2007 and 2008, and we're looking at a very simple economy. We have sneakers and we have grapes, okay? And so to figure out the nominal GDP, all we do is we take current prices, multiply it by current level of output, and that gives us a number, all right? So take a minute and see if you can figure out the nominal GDP for each of these years. Okay, so you should have done uh, 100 times 100, and you should have done 80 times 50. Add those together, and you get 14,000. 
You do the same thing for 2008, you get $20,100, okay? Um, so we can say in this economy, the nominal GDP has risen by 6,100. My dogs are having fun over here. Um, and so if you want to figure out the percent change, we take 20,100, subtract 14,000, divide it by 14,000, multiply it by 100, and we get an increase of 43.6%, okay? That's nominal GDP. As I said, though, we don't really look at nominal GDP. We prefer to look at real GDP. How do we do that? Here's how we do that. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to take everything at the price level of 2007. By using 2007 as our base year, this is going to equalize for prices. And now we can see that our economy grow or did things just get more expensive. Okay. So let's take a look and see what we're going to do here. Um, go ahead. Take a second and do this once again. You can pause it if you want to. Or I'll kind of stop it here for a second. Okay, so you should have done uh, same thing for 2007, and you'll notice, and this is an important point, nominal GDP and real GDP are always going to be the same thing in the base year, okay? So real GDP in the base year is also going to be $14,000, okay? Now, to get real GDP in 2008, we take the quantities of 2008 and multiply it by the prices of 2007, and we get 15000 okay? And so in real terms, in real value, output has risen only by $1,000, much smaller than it was when we did the nominal GDP. And if we look at percent change, 15000 minus 14000 divided by 14000 times 100 will give us 7.1%. So we can say our economy grew by 7.1%, Okay. Now, moving on, let's look at some of the shortcomings of GDP. First of all, one thing that we don't include in GDP calculations are things that we enjoy, right? Uh, it makes us better, it makes us a better country, but it doesn't contribute to the GDP numbers. So, if you think about it. When you read a book, when you take a walk, when you play catch with your kids, you're actually hurting the economy. You're not contributing anything. When you do yard work on your own, sorry, but you're hurting the economy. Okay? If you wanted to help the economy, you would hire someone else to do your yard work. That would count for GDP. Um, some more shortcomings of GDP. Some things that get included in GDP actually don't make us happy. Imagine that you live in a bad neighborhood and you have to put bars up on your windows, okay? You don't want to do that. That's something you don't really, uh, you know, plan for or doesn't make things great, but you're contributing to GDP. Think about this. Imagine one economy is based on producing assault rifles. That's what everyone does. The other economy buys and sells ice cream, right? Both are adding to GDP, which one is going to be a happier, safer, better society, right? I'm not going to answer that. I'll leave that up to you, but that's what we look at. And then finally, uh, look at, think about Hurricane Katrina. Think about hurricanes here, right? We didn't want to clean up. We didn't want to take care of that, yet it added to our GDP when we could put money into the cleanup. So, you know, sometimes we're doing things that are great that aren't contributing, and then on the other side, we're doing things that maybe aren't so great, but it makes us look good when we talk in terms of GDP, okay? Um, and then same thing to fight preventable diseases, uh, you know, spending money to fight, um, here it says emphysema, obesity, uh, cigarette smoking, right? This is contributing to GDP, but I think everybody would agree it would be much better if we didn't have to do this stuff, if it just didn't exist and, you know, we lived happy, healthy lives, and finally, some other shortcomings. Non-market activities don't count. So, um, you know, if I ask somebody to walk my dogs as a favor, right, I'm not paying them, that doesn't count as GDP, okay? Um, if you cut your friend's hair, you mow your parents' lawn, things like that. 
Um, leisure activities, right? Going to the beach, hanging out. I mean, these are things we all enjoy doing, but it doesn't count as part of GDP. GDP does not account for improved product quality. So when you think about how much better cell phones have gotten, right? It makes our lives so much easier, but there's really nowhere to include that in the GDP calculations. Um, the underground economy. The cartoon illustrates a guy selling watches on the black market. Other black market goods, I mean, obviously the big ones are, you know, people that sell drugs, maybe prostitution, other black market activities, um, maybe people that sell, you know, bootleg CDs, bootleg purses and things. None of those count. Um, the environment, we don't calculate the value that the environment provides. Um, and this is something that we'll talk about a little bit more tomorrow. Um, how do we value that? Um, and then calculating GDP, it doesn't talk about the distribution of income, right? The real measure of GDP is GDP per capita, per person, okay? Obviously, United States is going to have a bigger GDP than Puerto Rico. We're much bigger, right? We may have a well, now that Puerto Rico is having problems, but we do GDP per person, and that will tell us how we compare to other countries. Um, you know, inequality is a big problem now in the United States. Maybe the, we have a huge GDP, but maybe everybody is not seeing the benefits of that uh, huge number. And then uh, other non-economic sources of well-being. Those are things that are hard to measure, right? Clean air, clean water, right? Those are good things, but they're hard to measure in terms of GDP. So, you know, GDP is the thing that we use, but there are some limitations to that. And now, finally, um, I'm going to give you some practice to work on. Here's a short little problem. Take a few minutes, do this. It shouldn't take you very long. Obviously, you can use calculators if you want to. And then we'll go over this first thing um, tomorrow. So go ahead. Um, you can pause it because the video is going to stop in a minute. And then uh, we'll go over this in class. And again, as always, if you have questions, please make sure you jot down in your notes and ask me tomorrow.